Welcome back to Black News Tonight. By now, you all heard about Victoria's Secret Karen, Barbecue Karen, or my least favorite, Central Park Karen. Even if they come with different names, there is a common thread. And now, Karen got herself a feature film. Somebody's taking home security serious. Hi, I am Karen Drexler, I'm your neighbor. You need to be taking your trash cans off the curb right when the trash is picked up. Is she nice? Yeah, she's nice. Wait a minute, we have a white entitled neighbor named Karen. Karen. After a young black couple moves into a new house in the suburbs, they are greeted by a seemingly friendly white neighbor named Karen Drexler. However, this friendly facade slowly reveals a bitter, jealous, and racist woman who wants to remove the couple at any cost. Joining me now is the actor and producer, Corey Hardrick. He is on the show, my brother. It is good to see you, man. Uh, first of all- Thank you, Mark. I appreciate you for having me. Why a movie called Karen and why now? Uh, oh, it's my pleasure, brother. Why this movie now? Why now? I mean, why not? You know, it's it's reality, man. It's a slice of life, and they're just showing what the real world looks like. Hopefully, we can shine light on all this this uh, this white terrorism out here, terrorizing everybody for no reason, man. You know, lock them all up. You ask me. You know what I'm saying? Woo! You know, you going straight? Uh, that's you going straight for it? So, okay, you know, look. I Woo. went straight for it, man. You know <laughs> so, what I'm saying? I respect it. I respect the king. Look, in the film, you play Malik. Now, tell me about your character uh, and how he fits into this whole film. Yeah, well, I play this character, Malik. You know, they moved from the inner city, um, uh, East Point, Atlanta, and they moved to suburbia, you know, and then when you move to the neighborhood, you know, you're just faced with the, you know, the reality of, you know, who is this neighbor moving in here, and especially young black, you know, affluent, looking good couple you know, in a predominantly white neighborhood. And it's just like, we're, you know, we're working class people. We just moved up in the world. And like I said, it shouldn't matter where you live. You know what I'm saying? It should just matter that, you know, you can move, you can move up in the world. It shouldn't, you shouldn't be just judged by the, by the color of your skin. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta, you know, that's just, that's just what we're faced with. So when we moved to this neighborhood, man, we just encountered this real life Karen played by Taryn Manning and she does an amazing job. And she just, her, her racist brother, they terrorize us, man. They terrorize it. But at the same time, we fight back without giving the ending away. But um, yeah, hopefully, I mean, this movie was made to, you know, try to make change, man, in the world and just shine a light on what's really going on out here. And it's, um, you know, it's art imitating life, man. So, you know, I was excited to do it. it. It's, it's definitely art. It's definitely art imitating life, bro. And, and, and over the last couple of years, because of the cell phone cameras and news reports and social media, we've seen that Karens are almost like a daily uh, phenomenon. Do you experience that in your own life? Man, my next door neighbor, you know, I'm gonna tell you a story, you know, my stepdad parked his car today, they called. I don't know if it's a Karen, He maybe it was a Kevin across the street. They called because he was like an inch in the driveway. Like, this is what we go through every day, you know? Um, so that's that's the reality. So I know I know it firsthand. You know what I'm saying. Um, so when I got the script and I read it, I was just like, wow, I got to do it. And he was an activist, and I was just like, okay, let's sh let's shed light on this. And at the same time, it's entertainment. You know, it's uh, you know, it's it's it is what it is. You know, let's just be real. We just you got to do movies that reflect the times, and this is this is it. So definitely check it out. Give it a chance, man. Were you a little bit nervous? I mean, I saw um, I saw the trailer. I liked it, and I think it's going to be a great movie, and I can't wait to get the full release of it. But there were some people who, you know, on social media were talking a little bit, clowning a little bit. Why do you think the movie got that initial response? Yeah, because don't nobody want to hear about, you know, black pain and black trauma, you know, on, on what's going on in society. But it is it is what it is. You know, it is happening, and how do we shed light on this issue or this topic you got to hit them with the art form because it's just like you know hopefully you can like sprinkle the medicine and the food and show them this way you know what i'm saying but this is what we're faced with and what we're dealing with and um you know to me it's okay to show this movie give it a chance check it out you know you might enjoy it and you might learn something from it especially all the races out here you know black people ain't you know, we're not the enemy. The enemy is when you look in the mirror, that evil that you have, you know, we're trying to, you know, turn the light on you to uh, make a change for who you are as a person. So hopefully it can do that, 
you know, but if, if they don't like it, Absolutely. then so be it, you know. <laughs> it is what it is, too. Uh, <laughs> they go, they going to like it, bro. I ain't even worried about that. Like I said, everybody I know who has seen early cuts of it have loved it. They said this film is amazing. It's brilliant. I have no doubt uh, that, that this film is going to shine once people see it. Now, a, a little while ago, I had the director Barry Jenkins on the show, uh, and he told me that yeah. during the filming of Underground Railroad, he talked about he considered buying the cotton field uh, that they were filming on and burning it to the ground. It was just like a, an emotional response that he had from being in that kind of scene. When you were filming Karen, were there any moments where you felt overwhelmed, where you felt emotionally like, yo, this this, this is too real. This is so real. I feel it in my own spirit. Yeah, um, we would film like 35 minutes out from Atlanta from where we were staying um, and we would drive to work and through the neighborhood, you would see 2024 Trump posters on houses with the neighborhood we were living in. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think it was called Aqua. I think it was where that serial guy went on that killing spree and killed the people in the, uh, the parlors. It was that same neighborhood in Georgia. And you would see Confederate flags, American flags mixed together, like on houses. And I'm like, this shit is, this is real. And I'm going to work in this community. And they had a house that they had, you know, rented out for production. But that was the neighborhood that we filmed in. I believe that they had some incidents with neighbors calling the police. You know, like, you know, th these guys are not, like, real. This isn't a real sad crew. You know what I'm saying? Like, who are these people just filming right. our neighborhood? So, you know, that's just... That happened <laughs> working. So um, I would I would go home every night and tell the driver, look, look, man, keep your head on swivel and get me back to that main road so we can get back down to Atlanta. You know, word. I, like for real. That I was, know that's that right, was bro. for real. Um. So yeah. yeah. Um, you, you, but this movie needs about, to be, you know, needs to be told. No, it absolutely Sorry. does, man. You talk about work, man. You got so many current projects. One of the reasons why I respect you is just how, your, your work ethic. Right now, you have recurring roles uh, in the shy. Uh, All-American Homecoming. How do you manage to juggle all that stuff at the same time? Uh, I would say God and, and my wife, you know what I'm saying? They're my, you know, those are my backbones mm -hmm. and my foundation. You know, my wife, she's, her name's Tia Morris. She's, she's an actress as well. But like I said, she met me uh, moving oh, to Cali. Seven, oh, okay. You know, I sometimes, you know, I don't be like, you know, I'm not like that. But I just still, you don't, but, I dig, you I know, dig she it. was with me from the beginning. You know, uh, $75 moving to Inglewood. We've been together ever since, you know. So she saw me sleeping on the floor with no furniture. She saw all that, no car, catching a bus. And so that grounds me and that keeps me humble. And uh, my kids, man, and like I said, I'm a strong believer. I have faith, man. I, I, my f faith is like to the next level. I believe I can do all things, man, under the sun. And that's well, it. And My um, brother, you are doing I keep my it brother, simple and I just try to grind. You are doing all things. <laughs> Thank you, man. I'm excited about All America Homecoming. We start filming like in a few weeks, and that's the spinoff to All America, man. I'm, I'm really excited about that. And um, the shy as well. Shout out to Lena Waits for giving me an opportunity to rap my hometown. So, oh yeah, that's our sister, man. So look, you mean you killing it as a writer, a producer, an actor? You got ten acting jobs, man, and you keeping your head on the swivel from them cameras, man. That's a full time job on its own. <laughs> we respect you, brother. We love you, man. Thank you for everything you do, Love man. You Thanks too, for hanging Mark. out with us at Black News tonight. Yes, sir. Everybody, you, Karen man. will be in your home on demand September 3rd. That's next Friday. Make sure you check this joint out, man. You don't want to miss it. Let us know what you think. We're going to have a spirited conversation about this in them digital streets next week. But for this week, I got something to tell you about the digital streets. Stay here after the break. We're going to talk about the princess of R&B. Today marks 20 years since Aaliyah's life came to a tragic end. But the beautiful news is that her legacy and impact lives on, and we're going to talk about it right after this break.